Hey, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Vian Pham. I am one of the team members for Team 11, aka GAP. Uh, my team members are Mike Nguyen and Liam Tin. We are in admin, aka MIS 4478. And today we're going to talk to you or try to educate you about a certain law that affects all of us. So, who is Joseph Schumpter? Joseph Schumpter was born February 8, 1883. Uh, he lived till January 8, 1950. Uh, he was an economist, a political scientist, and he's a teacher. And he got some of his ideas from Karl Marx, who everyone knows is a communist. So today we're going to talk about Schumpter's second law. This law states that innovating large firm with some degree of monopoly power is going to more than likely than smaller firms to innovate. And we'll talk about that in a little bit in a follow-up video. Three. So how does Schumpeter approach this law? Well, Schumpeter essentially adopted the following from Marx's theory. Uh, in the book from Marx, Schumpeter argued that uh, capitalist firms who, keep, who want to stay competitive have to increase their productivity by introducing new and more efficient machinery. They, these new machineries are always bigger, they're better, they're faster, uh, lean in production. All the firms that did this succeeded in having more efficient technology and saw their competitive position increase. And the result, above average profits. If they didn't do this, if they didn't accomplish this, then they would essentially just push out the market and went out of business. Well, as Shelton got older, his perspective changed. He started focusing from cost cutting through the introduction of new machinery and you know these things are so called process innovation. And he started including other types of innovation as well, such as product innovation, organizational innovation, etc. That sort of thing. In two thousand three, uh, Steve Jobs, the head of Apple, invented something called the iPod. Looks something like this, but only this is an iPhone, but we'll talk about that in a sec. So, how did Apple revolutionize the industry and how does this relate to Shepard's Law? Well, uh, there was no other company out there, no small company, that could make something that Apple did. They invented, they innovated by creating a brand new category, a brand new product that no one had thought about. The iPod, when it came out, was the largest memory holder of music. There was no other competition for it. Shortly thereafter, uh, something came along called the iPhone. Imagine a phone that you can text, use the internet, browse the internet, and make calls. There was no other product like that. And finally, the last iteration of Apple's product, the I iPad. So, let's talk about how these relate to Schumpeter's Law. One, Apple is a large product. Uh, correcting company. Two, they created product, they innovated when no one else could. There was no other company that could come up with this. But once Apple made it, other companies copied it. They started a trend, a trend that Microsoft blazed a long time ago. And we're going to talk about Microsoft next and their Windows system. So in our second example, we're going to talk about Microsoft and Bill Gates. In the 1990s, specifically 94-95 period, uh, Microsoft, the uh, tech giant, released something called Windows 95, and it was a game changer. Up until then, the UI interface for every PC was already Windows, but Windows 95 drastically changed everything. I mean, what you're using now, Windows 7 or Windows 8 that's coming out, or even Windows Vista that you used before. It's all based on this UI called Windows 95. It was a large innovation because no one else could do it. No one else could control the PC market and create a product like this other than Microsoft, which in the end fits perfectly into Shelter's very special law a large firm innovating. And Microsoft continues to innovate. Even now, they're creating Windows 8. It's a UI interface for tablet. It can go from a PC to a laptop to a tablet. No problem at all. It's another example.
and now we're going to talk about innovation and invention. So how does a large company innovate and how does it invent? Well, starting with the fact that a large company has a very large collective of people. They have more capital, they have more resources. These people collectively can invent something. Let's say a three-wheel bicycle, you know, the bicycle doesn't fall over anymore. It's a great training wheel. So how does this fit into Shumpus Law? Well, these people, they invent, say, a computer. And the computer processes information and it increases efficiency. And as efficiency increases, people see the computer for different use. Not only can it process data, but it allows them to do other things with it. Say, watch a video, listen to music. If you're watching, uh, you're watching this video right now, you're on YouTube, which is a way to express yourself. But people using YouTube, they innovate, they invent YouTube, they use an innovation to make learning videos. Videos that teach you every little thing, you know, just like how I'm teaching you about Shelter's Law and giving you different examples. It's just one another example of a large firm using its ability, whereas a small firm does not have the capital to do it, even though it has the idea. So, in conclusion to the, today's lesson, what have we learned? We've learned that large firms have more resources, more capital. So they're therefore more capable of transforming ideas of their personnel to inventions and, in the end, innovative products and services. Two of our examples today, uh, Microsoft and Apple, the iPod, iPhone, iPad, and the Windows operating system. Moreover, large firms have a low barrier to market. They can enter the market very easily. And they have the ability to produce on economies of scale. So they have the ability to make huge profits from new product and for a while this temporarily makes them monopolies. Again, according to Shelter's second law of innovation, innovating large firms, it states that large firms with some degree of monopoly power are likely to innovate. I hope all these examples uh, provide you with some insight into Shelter's law. Thanks for your time.